Hello and welcome to uh, installing JEdit on Windows XP. The first step we've actually got to install the Java runtime environment. So we'll go right to java.com. Uh, go to www.java.com. And the user interface may be different, but ultimately you're just finding a way to download and it's going to automatically download just because we clicked on that download button. It may be a little different, but uh, you're looking for something that says something like, uh, you know, Java runtime environment, and uh, and I'll say yes. And so this thing will do some installation. And it, uh, I don't have Service Pack 2. Hopefully you will have Service Pack 2, but I can continue anyways. I'll accept the license agreement. I prefer not to install the Google Toolbar. I just only want to install Java, not the Google Toolbar. It's not required and uh, now the installation is going to start. Okay, so I'm uh, con 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 clicking finish here, but it really is just the uh, the beginning of the uh, next step. So let's uh, verify the Java version, and it will check to see if uh, it is, and uh, there it is. So I'll close this now, and the uh, next step is to install uh, JEdit, now that we have Java installed. We use JEdit as a programmer's editor because text editors like and word processors often try to show us files and format them and make them look good. When we're programming or writing HTML or CSS, we want to see what's really in the file. So JEdit is not the you know uh, easiest or prettiest, but it's very productive when we really want to know what's going on. And one of the reasons I like it is it works the same on Windows as it does on the PC. So we go to www.jadit.org. We do a download. We're going to pick the latest stable version, which is version 4.2. And I will download this. And I'm going to save it to my desktop. So it's here on my desktop. And it's jedit 42 install. And so uh, that's coming through pretty quick. And we'll give that a few seconds. So what we're going to do is install it, and then we're going to configure JEdit. It uh, it doesn't take too long. Um, you know, there's a few things I uh, want to show you about how to use it. Okay, so I'll just open this because it's that file on my uh, desktop. Say next, accept the license agreement. Next, 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 next. Sure, I'll create a, these icons, and away we go. Installing zippity doo dah. I'm not going to launch it quite yet. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. Throw it in the recycle bin. Oh, come on. Throw that in the recycle bin. And I'll get rid of it later. I just want to not double click on that and make the mistake. So I'll launch JEdit. And up it comes. Again, it's version 4.2. First time up, it tells us about help. So here's JEdit. And it's a, you know, it'll be an interesting user interface. You'll have to get used to it a little bit. I'll make it a little smaller here. Um, the first thing we want to do is, uh, JEdit is really good at switching between lots and lots of files um, all the time. And, and so I want to add something called the File System Browser. So I can view this. And this is a way that we can quickly move between uh, directories and files. And it works a lot better if you dock this at the left. So now we've got this user interface where I've got the ability to read and move through files. Here we go. Okay. And over here I can navigate into the C drive. And then when I open a file, like say my exec bat file, that's empty. Is there anything in here? Ah, oh, that's empty too. So I can open a file on this left hand side and I can edit the file in the right hand side. I'm going to close these files by pressing the little international not sign. Um, and so so here's how we go. Now the thing about it is, now I'm going to close JEdit, and you'll see that when I open JEdit back up, it knows, I don't even show the tips. You can watch the tips, but I'll, I'll close the tips. It knows this configuration. So one of the things you can do is anytime you see one of these little bars, you can move that back and forth. You can move this back and forth. Okay. And, uh, and away you go. Okay, so let's, uh, that's, that's getting it installed. Let me check the handout here. Got it configured. And um, 
let's go ahead and create a file. I'm going to create a file that's got some HTML in there. I'm going to say, hello, my name is, and I'll put this in bold, Chuck slash B slash. Oh, hang on, let me, let me set something so it's a little easier for you to see here. Uh, global options, there's a lot of things you can set. Okay, I am going to set in the text area that I want a big, big, big font. I want a 16 point font. That just so these things look a little better in the uh, uh, podcast. Okay, so this is what I've got. Now, this is the save button, um, but I'm going to do a file save as just to make sure I put this on the right place. Now, one of the keys here is the desktop and, and folders are in different places, and it kind of starts you in a stupid location here. Um, it's actually, you'd, you'd be saving right into JAD, which would be really bad, so don't do that. So I'm going to go to C, and then I'm going to go to Documents and Settings, and then I'm going to go to CSEV, which is who I am, then I'm going to go to Desktop, and then I am going to save this file as, um, you know, uh, zippy HTML. That's what I'm going to call it. And it'll show up here. And so you'll notice here that when I save from JEdit onto my desktop, it appears on my desktop. And so I'll just take a look at this file, zippy. And there you go. I've got some HTML. Um, and the bold, the bold is the way the bold is. I mean, where I wanted it bold, it is now bold. So this is the raw HTML up here. That's raw HTML there. And this is the rendered HTML in a browser. Okay? And so that's uh, that's basic use of JEdit. So so there's a couple things I just want to show you how to use. And, I, and you ought to do this too. And so I'm going to close this file. So now I have no files. Um, I'm going to open a file. This is one of the tasks. Is I want to navigate to a directory. And so the, the idea of navigating is you find your way down, see documents and settings, see sev, desktop. So that desktop is this same desktop space. And there's zippy.htm. And so I can double click on it or I can click on that and say open. So that's how I navigate to zippy. Okay. So I'm also going to, then I'll show you another way to save this and make a new folder. I'll make a folder on my desktop, and I'm going to take the same stuff. I'm going to save it as, but instead of saving it in desktop, I'm going to make a new folder. And this is the icon to make a new folder. Okay, and the new folder is going to be called SI100. And now you see that it appeared on my desktop. And if I go into SI100, I'm going to call this folder uh, zippy2.htm. Right. And um, I'll just change it a little bit, and I'll say Zippy2. My Zippy2 name is Chuck. And so now that I got the file saved, you'll notice that this little red thing is telling me that I haven't saved the file. So I want to save the file, and this pencil, not the greatest of icons, is the save. And you'll notice now it says that it's saved. And if I go into SI100, there indeed is Zippy2. And if I click on Zippy2, it opens in a browser. It says, hello, my Zippy2 name is Chuck. Silly stuff. Okay, so that's pretty much. Uh, let, let's see. Um, oh, multiple open files. Okay, let me open up uh, Zippy One here, or the first Zippy. Go back to desktop, and you're starting to see how this um, this interface allows me to move around pretty quickly and find things. Um, if I was over here, I could go to Documents and Settings, CSEV, Desktop, and now I can kind of edit you know, zippy.htm, and the other thing I'm going to show you is this little drop-down. I can go back and forth between these two files really quickly. I can have a lot of files open, and uh, away you go. Okay, and so the only other last thing left to do is uh, close some files. That gets them out of this list. Now, they'll tell you if it's been saved or not. So close, close, and now I'm done, and that is the end of this little lecture.